Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptor side, just reacting to some substantial Toronto Raptors news. That's right, we did have a, a Woj bomb be dropped on the Toronto Raptors, as we've had many regarding Pascal Siakam this summer. And this one, I think, has come logically after everything that's transpired in terms of the rumors, the reports, the, the things that Toronto Raptors have accomplished this summer, and it's come out... Well, Adrian Wojnarowski, the most trusted guy in the NBA, he's saying he would be shocked if the Toronto Raptors traded Pascal Siakam. Now, this is coming off of a multitude of reports this offseason. The Raptors were hearing offers, reportedly uh, listening around to what people would have to, to provide to the Raptors. Obviously, there was massive rumors that Woj and Shams themselves reported regarding the, the Golden State Warriors and a potential Wiseman, Wiggins, and two first-round picks that ended up being Kaminga and Moody, who we saw in the Summer League last night as a recording, uh, really showed out against the Toronto Raptors Summer League team, and I know a lot of people wanted that trade to go through, especially with Siakam's injury this offseason and his overall low value with the Toronto Raptors teams and in the fan base right now, just after a poor season up to his standards, and Riker and I were, weren't were really sold on that trade. Riker, I think, was a little bit more cool with it than I was. And then we we had the wave, the, the flush of rumors come out about every single team. You know, the Clippers are interested in Siaka. Most recently, the Kings, they wanted to trade Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley for Siakam, who we were significantly opposed to initially as it came out. We were kind of flamed for it in the, the comments section on our on our video, a few people agree. There's a there's a vast split amongst Toronto Raptors fans right now in terms of what they want to do with Pascal Siakam. But we've been consistent saying unless it's a, an offer that's going to blow us away, we'd like to keep Pascal Siakam around. It's the smart move. He's still, uh, you don't trade a, a guy that's an all-NBA talent. And he is. He was all-NBA second team just a year, two seasons ago. And you don't move on from a guy that's still in his prime, that's entering his prime. At a, at a low like this so it's a, and there's also the Ben Simmons reports I don't want to there's so much stuff that has happened in terms of trade rumors of Pascal this offseason now Woj just coming out saying he would be shocked that if, uh, if a trade would actually happen with Pascal and I think this makes a lot of sense the rumors are getting more and more ridiculous it was the, the Kings one was just something I was blown away that people were even thinking about accepting Bagley is a negative ass Buddy Heald on his big contract could be argued as a negative asset, and this team doesn't need another three-point shooting guard that we already have in Gary Trent Jr., right? He'd be coming off the bench where he'd be competing for minutes with a, a Fred Van Vliet, Malachi Flynn. I know Buddy Heald is pretty good, but you know it's not an essential fit to when compared to our starting power forward. And then Marvin Bagley, who can't stay on the court and is going to get paid a massive contract. That was... The sort of epitome where I'm just saying, okay, this is insanity, except, except for the LA Clippers rumors, but I there wasn't much legs to those in my opinion, but I digress. This is uh, this is sort of the point where it makes sense that Woj has come out here, and Bobby Webster has even spoken on this a bunch this offseason as well, talking about how we are going forward, building around Pascal, OG Ananobi, and Fred Van Vliet. That's our core, that's our team, and... We have guys coming in, whether it be Scotty Barnes, some of the newer guys, Wayne Wright, Precious Achua, Drogic for now, Trent, obviously we picked up this uh, trade deadline. Those are all sort of there to fit that core, that core group of players. And he made an emphasis on Pascal Siakam to, to sort of say that this is how things worked out. And rumors, and uh, I don't know if Webster explicitly said this, but it came out in a few reports that the relationship is, is tremendous there with Pascal Siakam, despite all of the chatter, all of the ongoings, and I guess all the flaming by Toronto Raptors fans, a pocket of Toronto Raptors fans upon Pascal Siakam this offseason, saying how the relationship is still tremendous with the organization and Pascal Siakam. There's also uh, a fake news tweet that was going around with NBA Central's uh, fake NBA Central account, but a bunch of prominent people retweeted it that Pascal Siakam was frustrated with the organization and wanted to trade. It was literally one of those burners that that have the, the actual NBA Central name, but you know, 300 followers, but people just retweet it because they don't have the bother, the time to check the actual account. But I digress on that one. The relationship is still extremely strong between Siakam and the organization. We don't have 
Siakam being a young socialite like Ben Simmons, who is about to demand a trade. A video's going up on Course I Digest. It's got to be recorded on, on that whole situation, but that's a mess there in Philadelphia. But everything is good with Pascal Siakam. Obviously, the injury is tough, but uh, there's videos of him working out right now. And Webster even uh, went on to say further. I'm Again, this is a, uh, I don't know if this is directly quoted, but apparently all of those leaks, all of those trades weren't necessarily the Toronto Raptors out there actively shopping Pascal, but more so other teams just trying to stir up the pot a little bit and try to get out their information on um, what they'd offer for Pascal, maybe build up a little bit of a market for him so the Toronto Raptors be more willing to make a move. So those are the things that Webster's sort of broken down. And for people that don't know, Bobby Webster is the Raptors general manager, the guy that makes all the trades underneath Masai Ujiri. Obviously the relationship with Masai Ujiri is there. And Pascal is... is NBA champion for this team. He's our number one option for the last couple seasons. I know people are saying he's not a true number one, but again, people, you have a talent such as that one, two, three, four, you want to keep him there on the roster. He's definitely not overpaid in terms of his contract value. I think he's a solid fit. And yeah, that's the direction. That's the news. But I sort of want to dive deep on, I guess my, my opinion has sort of been stated over the course of these podcasts, over the course of this offseason where I've sort of stood. But is this the right direction for the Toronto Raptors? Because I know a lot of people, they love to over, as everyone does in the NBA, if you're a fan of sports, it only makes sense to overreact to things that have only recently happened. You know, it makes it a bit of fun. But just after the last summer league game, people are saying, oh, Scotty Barnes, our fourth pick project. That's that's a tough situation, right? Wayne Wright, you know, he's not necessarily P.J. Tucker just yet. Will uh, will Precious Achua even be truly a, a rotation piece for this team next season? Right, there's all those question marks that come out when you lose one game in Summer League. And I get it. I get why people are worried, why people are nervous, especially after coming off of one of the worst seasons we had to witness in Toronto Raptors, at least the past decade of Toronto Raptors basketball. But I think we're fine. I think we're fine. I like it when team sort of rebuild retool in a well they still have their veteran their star players around so you don't build up a consistent year after year span of losing because once that happens once you have three four years of tanking and losing and just young players you know it's like the blind leading the blind the young players are leading the young players no one really knows what to do in your organization and it just gets messy but right now the Toronto Raptors have a lot of solid vets Fred Van Vliet even came out and said that this team and Fred, you know, people hate on me in the comment section for saying top four seed. Fred Van Vliet came out and said that the Raptors last year were fourth in the Eastern Conference before they got hit with health and safety protocols. So it's uh, it's definitely possible they come back into the, that form this season. I think they're a lot better suited to have, to make a, a solid regular season run this year than they were last year. I know we're losing Kyle Lowry, but Again, we have people actually playing their true positions this year. Our defense looks elevated. And we have two playable centers. Two playable centers for the entire year of the season. So I think uh, people are underrating the Toronto Raptors going into this year with our vets, what they can do. And then to have the young guys integrated with championship experience, championship tested players that can show them the ropes, see what they can do and grow together. That's how you build a team. That's how you sort of retool a roster, even if it's not necessarily going to be a, a championship right away, right? That's the that's the route you go in. So no, I don't think the Raptors should trade should have traded Pascal for a bunch of assets unless it was, I know, I, I put it at four or five first round picks from the Sacramento Kings because those are the most valuable picks you can get in the entire NBA being a team that hasn't made the playoffs in about 15 years. You know, if we get four or five unprotected first round picks from the Kings and then that Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley return, okay, then you're talking a little bit. But outside of that, you know, it's it's tough. I know uh, Kaminga and Moody, they look solid for the Golden State Warriors. And I get that Wiseman has all the potential in the world. And sure, you, you, you could have made that deal. That's one of the ones I wouldn't have hated if you're going in that rebuilding direction. But I like what the Toronto Raptors are doing right now. I think the, the squad has a, a strong core of OG Pascal and Fred Van Vliet and then a lot of young players that can certainly develop into perfect whether it be complementary or legitimate stars to build around that core whether it be Scotty Barnes Gary Trent Jr. I know Riker said that if he had to pick one player on the Toronto Raptors to be a future all-star probably outside of Pascal is Gary Trent Jr. So we have a lot of talent on this roster we have a we have a squad 
And just join the bandwagon, guys. People are, are hating on the op- optimism that uh, we have on this podcast, but the team, they're going to be good going forward. They're going to be at least exciting as any young team in the NBA is going to be. And we re-signed our biggest free agent this offseason, season, Masai Ujiri. So that's all you can really ask for. This the Raptors will be fine. They'll be they'll be solid going forward. But yeah, I don't want to ramble on too much about a report, something that we already pretty well already knew about. Siakam's going to be coming into next season unless something catastrophic happens in the NBA where a superstar demands a trade. Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons has already demanded a trade, but I think everyone's off the the young social light, uh, the social light trade proposal or whatever. So. I don't know. You guys are the best for making this fire. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, all that cool stuff. Lots of videos, lots of content still coming. New still flying in for the Toronto Raptors. So subscribe to Raptors Digest. And uh, yeah, we got Summer League action we're breaking down. So lots of lots of fun stuff. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.